inspired by Malcolm X too, huh? I've always loved Malcolm X, yeah. He, he, I used to want to join Islam a lot when I first read his biography. You know what it was too? What changed Malcolm X's entire philosophy was his trip to Mecca. And mashallah, we're finally here. Well, we're in Medina, we're going, uh, we're going Mecca in two days. But that changed his entire philosophy. So he was, he had a lot of anger and, and violence in his heart. And he had a, kind of this separation philosophy in America, especially from his perspective, the KKK burned down his home. And then he went to Mecca and he came to this place and he, he came to this realization that the only solution to racism, the only solution to hate is Islam. Because he, he was sitting down with white people, with all people of all different races and that's when he first realized that these people are my brothers within Islam. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what culture you grew up with. It doesn't matter what your skin color is. As long as we believe that, and as long as we're serving God, because we are all God's creation. So what, what, where are we right now? So this here is the, is the opposite to the Qibla side of Masjid al-Nabwi. So this mosque is called the Mosque of the Prophet. Peace and blessings be upon him. Um, we're facing the Qibla, meaning that the way your, your camera is facing right now is the direction of prayer. And you see these beautiful uh, kind of, you can say umbrellas that have been made. Um, may Allah reward those that built these. They close up uh, at times, you know. If you come at different times of the day, they'll close up. And when they close up, you can see the sky. But at times when, when it's colder or when it's raining or the sun is hot, they open it up. Something so beautiful. Um, this is the mosque of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Obviously, it's expanded now much. Um, some of the scholars said the older inner city of Medina is all inside the mosque now. Um, what we're going to go towards now is called Jannatul Baqi, which is the graveyard from Medina in the old days, where people like Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, is buried, where people like Uthman ibn Affan are buried, uh, great companions, and still today people are being buried there. So we're going to be going towards that direction. But chap, I want to I want to hear. Should our brother here take his shahada? I want to. We're here at the Maybe right after time. Maybe at the end of the tour, he'll be so end moved that he'll, have, yeah, right. he'll be in tears. And if he has questions, he can ask. It's a very yeah. historical place. Yeah. They, do you call these umbrellas? I was wondering what they were when I first saw them. They, they close up, right? So it's kind of a, it's kind of like an umbrella, right? I don't know what you would call it. Alhamdulillah, Nico's being recognized all over the place, man. Mashallah. And Allah you increase too. it in goodness. Well, I saw a couple of things when people were praying that they were, they were in front of the imam. Is that? That's not permissible. Yeah, you got to okay. be behind the imam. Because it, it's so crowded inside the mosque here that people yeah. are starting to pray outside too. Unfortunately, some people are not uh, as knowledgeable as they should be, so they make mistakes and things. But uh, you should be uh, behind the Imam. So the prayers aren't accepted when that happens? Yeah, we ask Allah to forgive people for their ignorance, right. but that's not an acceptable place to pray in front of the Imam. Yeah. And why is it that men and women can't pray in the same area? I mean, if you look at the earlier religious traditions, they also had the same thing, where people should be focused on their prayer, not on you know one of the natural inclination towards the other gender, right? So if you have men bowing and women prostrating in front of each other that are not married, obviously or not related, it would cause issues, you know. Right. So even if you look in Judaism, if you go to the Wailing Wall in, in, in Jerusalem, it's segregated. If you look at early churches, they were segregated. People start selling out. Now what happens is the, you know, the, the spirituality gets taken away. People start. Salam alaikum. Amazing work what you guys are doing today. Allah I've been watching the stream all day. Barakallah feek. Uh, yo, you could learn a lot from him. So Mashallah. Should continue. Great. Where are you from? Great to meet you. Oh yeah. Talking about Malcolm X. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever read? There's a beautiful letter that Malcolm wrote to his people in Harlem mm. after he did Hajj. No, I haven't read it. Oh my God, it'll change your life. Yeah. Is it in his autobiography? Uh, it might, I don't think it might be in the autobiography. But what did he say? Up, Can you give a brief summary? He basically said that the reason that the American cop, he came here and he saw some pop back here out, and there's a famous picture of him. Like, I mean, if you saw it in Medina, that's like yeah. amazing. But he said that the racism is an American problem. It's yeah. rooted in America, it's an American problem. Because when he came to Hajj, he was like, wait a second. He changed I his whole perspective. Correct. Yeah. Like I saw someone from Japan, I saw someone from China, Indonesia, 
like even I did Umrah yesterday or two days Mashallah. ago. Mashallah. Like, Mashallah, I'm going Allah around walking like two months off. There's a guy making dua in like his language. I'm just saying at me because Mashallah. you know obviously it's something beautiful. So essentially he was talking about how like racism was so deep rooted in American and the West that he didn't see it. So when he came back, he went to Hajj. After he came back from Hajj, that's when I don't know if you know what happened. Yeah, of course. He got course assassinated. Yeah. But, you know that perspective change is huge. So I don't, I'm like. That's why I wanted it. to come so bad. No, that you're, that's accurate yeah. completely. I, we, I was just telling Warner about that. That's exactly why I wanted why? to come. Yeah, I'm from LA. Like, uh, I'll read that letter, Mods. Yeah. If you find it, put LA, the link in the chat. Represent the US. Yeah. For real, bro. People, so people, people. Why they come to Oh, what? Now you gotta give him a hug. Give him no, a please hug. give me a hug. Okay. Please. All right. Should I make you off from my right hand? What? Yeah. Make sure yeah. you're not joking. Hey, great to meet you, bro. Assalamualaikum, guys. Alaikum assalam wa Allah. So if you look on that side straight, you can, it's kind of dark, but you can see the expansion going on. Alhamdulillah, the Muslim Ummah is growing. And every year we have more and more people coming and they're expanding the mosque more and more and running out of room. You know, this is late at night, but Alhamdulillah, you can see people are here. They're praying, they're sitting with their families, having a good time within the halal, Alhamdulillah. But because the increase, especially in Ramadan or in Hajj, uh, time, you know, even though in Hajj, obviously you're going through the days of Hajj, but before and after, people come here so much that they're having to expand constantly. Um, it gets packed completely during yeah, the day. Yeah, yeah. You should pray Jummah on Friday. You're going to be praying in the middle of the streets. Yeah. I came here at Jummah one time at 10 a.m. and I couldn't get inside. <laughs> it was that packed. There's 10 from Safi, says, Salaam Alaikum, Sheikh. I want to do Umrah, but I don't know how to, and I have no one to come to. Please help me, what should I do? Thanks. Where, where is he at? Uh, I don't know, but I think he's American. Uh, inshallah, we're coming for Umrah on the 29th of November from LAX. Uh, check the flyer online. You can contact my son. Um, it's his name Yusuf Ibn Uthman at gmail.com. So Y-U-S-U-F-I-B-N-U-T-H-M-A-N at Gmail. We only have, I think, a couple of seats left. It's going to be a really great Umrah because we're sponsoring a lot of new Muslims. So half the group almost is going to be reverts. Some of them that could not have come. But Alhamdulillah Sneek was, mashallah, sponsoring one. I'm someone. sponsoring one. OMF is sponsoring some. So we'll bring them people to connect them with the holy sites. You can join us if you, inshallah. Mecca is really the city that never sleeps. I know this is Medina. Medina too. Yeah, Medina too. It's Mashallah. so clean. Like it's it's insane to me how like how many people come here every single second. Yes. The floors are completely clean. Alhamdulillah. I would feel totally comfortable walking barefoot here. Yeah, yeah, this is so clean. Mashallah. Well, as you know, Muslim Muslims are literally the cleanest people. I, if a Muslim that prays five times a day, it's he's clean five times a day. Five times a day, you can't get cleaner than one that. One time, one time I was at work and I was making wudu, like I was washing up before the prayer. And that day I, ha I hadn't put my socks on in wudu, so I had to take my socks off. So I took my socks. I was washing my foot. One of my coworker walks in, right, and he's like. Ew, why do you have your foot in the sink? I told him, bro, my foot's cleaner than your face. He was like, <laughs> he was like what? He really him, went ill? Yeah, 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 he was kind of a little bit fruity. Uh, I was like, yo, you know, I told him, how many times do you wash your face? He's like, twice, once in the morning, once in the evening. I was like, I wash my foot five times a day, bro. Right, that, that's how clean we live. Alhamdulillah, as a Muslim, for Jummah, you make ghusl, you take your bath. Every, every time you have janaba with the wife, you have take your bath, all those things. You live a clean life. Not just clean on the outside, but clean on the inside. Free from idol worship, free from... Uh, Can we go in? Yeah, no, that's the woman's side, yeah. Oh, duh. <laughs> yeah. So Warner, so, you know... Uh, 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 hey! Oh, yeah, my bad, bro. Yeah, I know, I know. I, uh, you know what? I think now you got to hold this again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> so, we see also here in Medina, people from everywhere in the world. See people walking around, you can tell they're from different countries, all living peacefully, alhamdulillah. You know, people are never angels, but Islam brings that sense of brotherhood, you know. We look at a dinner today, how many people were willing to pay for us and willing to help us and willing to do things that regularly people wouldn't do, you know. Check out that cat. 
That's a halal cat right there. Yeah, Medina's filled with beautiful cats should, should I pet and it? people. Yeah, go, yeah, go, go, go ahead. Should I go pet it? Let's see if... Uh... Should I pet it? Alaikum salam. I just was watching the stream. Oh, you were? Good to meet you, bro. Oh. Uh, you don't got it like that, bro. <laughs> so now we're going to be getting to the original part of the mosque coming up in a little while here. As you can see, this is all the expansion. And this on the right is still all the women's area. So we can't go in over there. Uh, we'll drink some, some. Yes, I want some. Yes. Got to have a couple, uh, couple of oh, cups. I'd love some zum zum. Wait, so you want some zum zum? Stream type is bringing him another hoodie to hold. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, chat. Not kidding. <laughs> I tried, I tried. It's, it's live. Wow. It's live. It's live. What can we do, man? We don't need to make wudu when I'm not praying. I already have wudu. Yeah. Always stay in wudu, man. It's like it's like your armor. Stay prepared. So if I use the bathroom, do I need to make wudu again? It's good. I mean, if you're not going to pray, you don't have to or touch the Quran and so on. But for me, anytime I go to the bathroom, I make wudu right afterwards. Because you wash your feet every time you pee? Yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, unless I'm wearing socks, then I can just make masha. I can just wipe over them if they're thick socks. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, I try to keep in a state of wudu because wudu is something that protects the believers as well from evil and magic and all that. So look at how beautiful these doors are. Yeah. Look at the doors to the place, to the masjid. This over here behind me, this is Jannatul Baqi. This is the graveyard that I was speaking about earlier. You can see that it's closed off over there. I don't know if they were cleaning or what. But this used to be outside the city of Medina. So imagine at that time, this would be like the, like the border where, where the graveyards were. And this is the inner city. Now it's all part of the mosque. That's how much it's grown. Now, if oh, you... sounds are for blind people. But yeah, continue. Yeah, it so. might be. Uh, you were saying? Let me ask this guy. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, why is okay? It's for blind people. Okay? He doesn't, he doesn't know. know. The yeah. chat saying it's for blind people. Blind that makes sense. People. Interesting. Yeah, I saw the recitation of the Quran has translation for sign language and stuff nowadays as well. So that's really nice. Yeah, so... Over here, now this is the old mosque, the, the front part. Um, this is where the original building was before the big expansions. Look how beautiful and peaceful we are here, man. Such a, such a tranquil feeling. The prayer I did earlier here was um, one of the most cleansing that I had in a long time. Felt like a new person. Who are inshallah yes, now? This is Muslim Jadid. Mashallah. Barakallah. Now that giant hoodie is actually helping block a little bit. Inshallah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Got a got a beautiful brother. Where would he go? What happened? Oh, he just disappeared. Subhanallah. That was like that was strange. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Chat. We got a. This guy just came up to me, and then he just literally disappeared. I don't even see him. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. And he brought this as a gift for you. For Cracker? It's a prayer mat. Yes. Yeah, the, this Cracker guy, got a, pr a prayer mat, yeah? The guy just came out of nowhere and said, uh, said, this is the guy becoming Muslim. And I said, yes, inshallah. And he said, this is a gift for him. And know that we pray here the way that Jesus prayed uh, when he worshipped God. With his head to the floor. How all the and he and he said this is when you're Muslim is how you're gonna pray on. It's amazing. <laughs> so it's a gift for you. So I believe in one God. You do believe in so God. I'm Muslim. You're Muslim. Yeah, right? Yeah, bro, don't stop joking around, man. No, no, no. Let's do this. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Do, you believe in one God. Yeah, yeah. And you believe in the prophets like we talked about in the guidance that God sent, right? Uh, I'd have to read into it uh, a little bit. But let's talk about it, right? Let, the prophets they brought a guidance how to live, how not to kill, how to how to live a a, a healthy life. We already agreed, me and you earlier, right? That God would give us some kind of guidance, right? And we talked about how the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, couldn't have written the Quran. He couldn't read or write. He wouldn't have known those scientific miracles. He would not have known that the sun has an orbit and a moon has an orbit. He wouldn't know fresh water and salt water mix but don't touch. He wouldn't have known that there's waves under the ocean. He wouldn't have known that, that mountains have 
have pecs that go in. You couldn't. How did he have like a like a drill that he you know dug into the earth? He couldn't. A man who couldn't read or write, he was not a poet, he was not a professor. There is no way he could have brought something like that, right? Yeah. So if you believe in Allah and you believe in the Prophet, you're Muslim. Right. So let's do the Shahada. You ready? Uh, I don't know if I'm ready. Why not? What are you yeah, waiting I think for? I need some more time. I we'll, gotta, I gotta read it a little bit. We'll give you time. Take your time. We don't pressure anybody. But chat really wants to see a shahada. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, we don't pressure people. Right? Hell cracker. But Bronson would have taken there. a shahada on the spot just for the clip, man. Look how beautiful and peaceful this is. Musa, take a shot of the, like, how you doing? Good, how are like you? standing here and going all the way down. So, um, and that way. How beautiful that architecture is. Alhamdulillah. It's kind of disappointing because I know that soon I am going to return to the normal American streams. And it's not going to be as... But it's all balance. I'm going to end Sheikh Uthman. I'm going to... We'll get some sleep because... Inshallah. I don't want to keep farming Sheikh Uthman. He, he, needs to get some, he needs to get some rest. You have another meeting at 4? 4 a.m. I've got a lecture, so I still gotta, <laughs> That's insane. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna sleep till five. I'm gonna go pray. So this is, these are the nights to get the benefit, you know. Stay up till four, do the lecture. Then when pray do you Fajr. sleep? Like when you go back to San Diego, you gonna sleep at all? <sighs> you know, I, uh, even in San Diego, I don't get that much sleep. You know, because I, I work and then kids and all the stuff. But Alhamdulillah. You need to take a vacation. Like, <laughs> no, actually, I know that. You, you, know, you, you, need, you need to take a week off somewhere. This no, is my vacation. <laughs> no, like just where you could sleep and then sit at the beach for, yeah. for a good week it, for your health. That would be nice, but what's holding you much, back? Ah, uh, too much to do, man. I got. I mean, right now when I get back, I gotta start looking for work again. <laughs> I finished my contract, so. Oh wow. Yeah, I gotta, and then I gotta. Obviously, I got a wife, kids, work, dawa. I got. My durus are on hold right now, so since I'm here, no, no lessons in the mosque. So when I get back, the students can be like, yo, let's get it popping, you know. But alhamdulillah, we work hard in this dunya, so Allah gives us in the hereafter. We have a firm belief that none of this is for waste. It's, we don't do it for money, we don't do it for fame, we don't do it for show. We do it for Allah sincerely. That's why all these guys that want to debate, like debate this guy, debate that guy. One of the things I told them, okay, Cancel your Patreon. Don't take money for da'wah, for Christianity, for evangelicalism. Leave all that and then come debate with me. Because the problem is they all do it for money. They do it for fame. They do it for their Patreon. <coughs> me, alhamdulillah, I do it for Allah. I ask Allah to accept it. I ask Allah to give us all sincerity and give us steadfastness on the religion. It was a beautiful stream, beautiful conversation. And he's already accepted the Islamic belief. He believes in one God. He believes in the Prophet. We'll give him some time for his shahada. Right. We don't pressure anybody. But that by itself was worth it. So, inshallah, hopefully tomorrow or the day after on this trip, live. And then you have chat. your umrah immediately. This then is you the can best do your umrah. Wow. Become a Muslim, like, you, got, you got a prayer it's, rug it's already. A great you can get a free, to be a Muslim free umrah. Have the opportunity to. Yeah. To have you know, umrah. there are people that spend their whole lives saving up and never, never see Mecca and Medina. Right. Allah will give them for their, for their intention. Right. But Allah has blessed you, you're already here. And man. you're here. This is the Imagine. place. This is the place. Shahada straight to Umrah, wow. You know, there's even stories of cab drivers who take people to the Haram and you ask them, when was the last time you've been there? I haven't been there in years. Wow. But they just drop people off. So that That's just shows, sad. even if you live here, like how difficult it is, how difficult it is to get there. Yeah. So for you it's to be privilege. here, it's truly We're a blessed blessing. To be here. But it's just, you, are you going to accept that blessing or not? Well, I love and, you guys, man. I'm going to end stream. I love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Follow God, everybody. I will say this, this, uh, this last piece of advice. If you're in a position right now where you're depressed or you're, you, don't have a, you don't know what you want to do in life, I recommend immediately to start going to the gym regularly and second one to start prayer. If you start those two things, if you keep that routine up in your life, things will start to change immediately. I think that's the best way. What happened? Allah, we think you're lying, but mine up to move. Then you buy the remembrance of Allah with the half like this. So if you pray, that's what it means. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, and I'll see you in the Love Speech community if you want to do everything. Links in the description for everything. Love you guys. Be safe. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.